What was once one of the most famous Irish whiskey brands brought back to life. Giddy up. Hey, right, let's drink some whiskey. Welcome to Whiskey and Whiskey. I'm the Whiskey Chaser, Brian, and on the show, I review whiskey without giving it an actual score, which is, you know, me just drinking whiskey and giving you my opinions on it. Coming to you from the always cool Christie's Bar, many thanks to the lads for letting me come in and of course take over and uh, do these videos and giving you an informed decision. On today's show, as I had said, one of the biggest brands of days gone by in Ireland and of course the United States as well. And we're talking about the Tyr Connell. It's brought back to life recently. I'm gonna give you my opinions on it on this Whopper, the 15 year old, Majira finish Tyrconnell. Before I get into drinking of the whiskey, I like to, if you don't know by now, uh, give a little bit of history on the brand. And this one, like all others, has a great history and a great story behind it. So pour a dram, sit down, put your feet up, turn it up, let's get into the history. The Tyrconnell brand originally came from Abbey Street Distillery, which was based in Londonderry. The distillery itself was said to have been formed in 1820 and built on the site of an old monastery. There are conflicting reports that the distillery was up and running in 1790, but excise returns from 1802 do not show any record of there being distilling in that part of the in Londonderry itself at that time. By my research, the distillery is said to have been built in 1820 by Alexander Stewart, and it was one of the largest distilleries in Ireland at the time, and it was known for producing quality whiskey. It wasn't until 1830 that Alexander Watt bought the distillery, along with another distillery next to it, Waterside Distillery. The Watt family had an established wine and merchant business that they set up in 1762. There are a few conflicting dates uh, throughout the history of when the actual distillery was purchased by the Watt family. Some are saying 1839, some say 1854, and some say in around the 1870s. But what is believed to have happened is that it was at certain points in which the Watt family took over control from their partners. In 1833, a coffee still was installed on the site of the Abbey Street Distillery, and the installation was overseen by Aeneas Coffee himself. The move proved to be quite rewarding, and it turned the Abbey Street Distillery into the largest distillery in Ireland, capable of producing two million gallons of whiskey a year. It was so rewarding that a couple of years later, they decided to install a second coffee still in the Abbey Street Distillery. The flagship brand of the distillery was the Tyrconnell Whiskey, which was named after a racehorse that the Watt family owned. This racehorse in 1876 won the National Produce Stakes at 100 to 1 odds. And before Prohibition, the Tyrconnell Whiskey was one of the biggest selling whiskies in the United States. Not only the United States, but also England, Canada, Australia, and other territories at the time. In 1902, 1903, the Watts family amalgamated their distillery with two other Belfast distilleries to form United Distillers Company. In 1913, the company got into a conflict with another Scottish giant, Distillers Company Limited. From bad deals to bad timing, prohibition, and changes in legislation, Watts were forced to close down the distillery in 1925. Watts brands remained dormant until 1988, when Cooley Distillery, operated by John Teeling, acquired the Tyrconnell brand name and brought the whiskey back to life. Cooley Distillery, which was once the only independently operated distillery in the country, was formed in 1987 by John Teeling. John Teeling converted a state-owned potato alcohol plant into two distilleries, one with a pot still, one with a patent still. It was Willie McCarter in 1988 who had acquired some of the Watts' assets, joined up with John Teeling in a merger and brought the Tyrconnell whiskey back to life. In 2011, Beam Incorporated bought the distillery from John Teeling. Beam Incorporated became Beam Centuri in 2014, and Beam Centuri are now the proud owners of Cooley Distillery. So there's a bit of history and a bit of information behind the Tyrconnell brand. If you like that, give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Let's get into the tasting. Okay, so this is the moment I've been waiting for. This is a 15 year old double distilled single malt finished in Majira casks. It's aged for 15 years in ex bourbon and it's finished for three months in Majira casks. 46% ABV, non chill filtered, and typically speaking, you can find this in between 70 to 100 euros. I've seen it online for 70, I've seen it online for 100. It is available in the States. I've seen it through various different ads and Facebook groups. I've seen people requ request information on it. It's out there. I would highly recommend that maybe you look yourself and see what kind of prices they are in the States. Not 100% sure, they fluctuate crazy here. Initially, 
Previously, I believe this was to be a limited bottling, but I'm not sure now as a part of the range. I did check it out online and I didn't see it on the website. That's not to say that it isn't. Things change constantly and sometimes uh, websites and media don't keep up with it as well as it should or whatever. Look, it's in the glass. I'm excited about this. I have had it before. I know myself what I'm going to expect about it. The Tier Connell range is really um, from everything from their 10 year old variations up to the 16 year old and their single malts are just incredible whiskies. We'll give it a little stir and let's give it a little nose. Ah, it's lovely. Um, the first thing I'm getting is, this is a real bright kind of whiskey, vibrant. Um, the first thing I kind of get is white grapes on the nose, a slight bit of apple, a little bit of barley in the background, a little bit touch of the wood, tiny bit of spice as well, not much, but it's there, but it's not really in your face. The very slight hint of pineapple to it in the background along with a little, little, little bit of butterscotch. I mean, you know, it's it's really pleasant. It's, it's quite complex. So I would say probably pull a load of different um, notes yourself off of it. Mm. It's the grape, uh, the, the white grape and the apple that stands out the most to me um, and, and very pleasant. So let's have a little sip as we always do and um, we'll see what it's like. Slanja. There's a lovely malt to it. There's a lovely apple, honey, a little bit of caramel, a little bit of the toasted almonds flavor to it. It's so mouthwatering. Um, there's a nice hit of cinnamon spice, actually. It's, it's a spicier whiskey than the nose would leave you to believe. That's not a bad thing. It's not an overpowering spice. It's just all balanced so well. The sweetness, the, the, the spiciness, the long lasting flavor, the warmth, it's still warming. It's still, it's still coming back to me. I'm still, I can still pull the apple off it. I can still pull the grape off it. It's very good. I have a 15 year old, you know, finished for, for three months roughly in Madeira, double distilled, coats the mouth beautifully. From start to finish, that is an exceptional dram. One that um, definitely should be in the, uh, or on the drink shelf. It really is really good. So even on the finish, you're still getting um, a lovely balance of the sweetness, the spice, quite warming, and they're all playing perfectly with each other. There's no, uh, there's no imbalance to me. I don't find any imbalance in, in, in any of the flavors there. This is one that's really under the radar. You know, you don't see a lot of people hyping this and I don't know why. Look, I can't really say much more than that. Um, I'd highly rate that. From start to finish, that was really enjoyable. If you do find a bottle of it yourself, um, check out and see, see the prices around. They do fluctuate a little bit, but certainly give it a chance, give it a try. Uh, go in on a bottle share with someone and see what, what it has to offer because from the nose to the palate to the finish, beautiful, start to finish, really great dram, really good value dram, I think, in my opinion. And I've always kind of enjoyed the Tyrconnell range. It's been a long time since I've had it. I have had it before, but even, you know, as you, you, you kind of, uh, the more you practice drinking whiskey and the more notes you take and, and, and sips you take and all that kind of stuff, the more you're really able to pull different things out of whiskeys. That's got a great uh, nose, a great finish, uh, really enjoyable. I'd highly recommend you find a bottle. All right, so we're gonna leave it at that. Uh, I don't really have much more to add to this, only that if you can find a bottle, do find a bottle. Reach out if you agree. Um, if you like this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. Many thanks again to the lads here in Christie's who uh, let me come in and, you know, socially distance and, and do, do my thing so that I can bring you videos every week. Plenty more stuff to come actually in the next few weeks. Keep an eye on the channel. Make sure you're subscribed. And of course, the reviews, they won't stop coming. Big things ahead. Thanks for joining me. For myself, Brian, the Whiskey Chaser, it's launching.